I'm Marshall Massengill, Principal Solution Delivery Architect for OpenNMS, and today we're going to be talking about OpenNMS Meridian. OpenNMS Meridian is a highly scalable open source network management platform that enables network traffic analysis, network discovery, alerting, and monitoring by leveraging open standards and protocols. OpenNMS Meridian is a comprehensive solution to monitor enterprise network performance and ensure the availability and performance of your critical network services. Today, we're going to focus on flows and SNMP. So what is a network flow? Network flows are a way to collect meta information of a packet entering or leaving a network device. We can leverage the metadata with the help of some analytics to provide insight on sources, destinations, types of traffic, and the quality of service. You can think of flows like airport departure and arrival logs. Consider a network as an airport where data packets are like flights departing and arriving. Flows can be likened to the departure and arrival logs that track various details of each flight, such as the airline, flight number, departure city, arrival city, passenger count, and flight duration. OpenNMS Meridian provides flow classification based on IANA standards. Custom classifications can be created using source, destination, ports, protocols, and exporters. Applications can then be identified based on their classification. Conversations can be identified based on classified flow traffic between a set of hosts. Information about quality of service provided by DSCP or differentiated services code point. And OpenNMS can enrich information about the specific host involved in a flow. Let's take a look at visualizing flow data with OpenNMS Meridian. This is OpenNMS Meridian. We're going to log in as the admin user, and then we're going to be presented with the main dashboard view. From there, we're actually going to select a node that has flow data associated with it. By clicking on the node list, we're going to use this PFSense router. You'll notice that this PFSense router is reporting that it has ingress and egress flow data. If we click on the node and go to the detailed node view, we'll also notice that it's reporting flow data. If we then click back to the home page, we're going to click on the flow deep dive dashboard, which is going to take us to the OpenNMS plugin for Grafana and one of the default dashboards we ship with it. This dashboard is configured to use OpenNMS as a data source for flows and performance, and it is using the PFSense router we previously highlighted. You'll notice that we're getting lots of data that shows the various types of traffic and applications being transferred by the node. We can adjust the time frame and look at the data for the last three hours. Thanks to the power of OpenNMS, we can leverage additional information provided by SNMP statistics to form a complete picture. In addition to the types of traffic, we can also get information about conversations and throughput for each one of the hosts, communicating as part of a conversation. We can also get throughput by DSCP, or Differentiated Services Code Point, by application, and by conversation. This dashboard shows the power of OpenNMS Meridian and its ability to look at flow data. Network engineers are faced with many challenges. It can be difficult to diagnose performance issues, especially as users are encountering them. A network engineer needs to look at many different aspects. Is this an application issue, or is it the user's device? Or could it actually be something on the network? Even when it has been determined to be an issue with the network, there is a list of questions that someone will typically go through before they can even begin the troubleshooting process. When did the issue start? Is the issue constant or intermittent? Is the device on the enterprise network, or is it someone's home network? Is the issue related to all applications, or just a particular one? Is there a particular part of the application that is slower, or are there other users experiencing similar issues with that application? Network elements for flows consist of exporters, devices like router switches and firewalls, collectors, in our case OpenNMS Meridian, and management and analytics applications, also OpenNMS Meridian. It's useful to understand that while flows are often exported from networking equipment like routers and switches, flow data can also come directly from servers, and they can export telemetry data through the SFlow protocol. So how does OpenNMS ingest flows? OpenNMS is a collector for flows. It leverages something called telemetry D, or the telemetry daemon, to ingest flow information from exporters. The telemetry daemon provides a framework to handle sensor data pushed to Meridian. 
The framework supports applications that use different protocols to transfer metrics. By default, we use a single port listener and it works for a wide array of flow protocols. Things like JFlow, SFlow, several versions of NetFlow, including IPFix. With Telemetry D, operators can define listeners supporting different protocols to receive the telemetry data and adapters transferring the received data into generic formats like flows or performance data. OpenNMS stores flow records into Elasticsearch using an OpenNMS created plugin that installs into your Elasticsearch cluster. You can set a persistence policy for Elasticsearch to only keep flow records for a specific period of time. How does OpenNMS enrich flows? OpenNMS enriches flow records by using information it already has about systems in its inventory. It tags flows and groups them based on rules. OpenNMS can leverage node data and the metadata associated with nodes like categories to enrich flow records. This enrichment adds context to speed time to resolution when troubleshooting and can enhance forensic network analysis. So how does OpenNMS classify these flows? OpenNMS uses a classification engine that applies rules to filter and classify flows. The flow classification engine bundled with Meridian is adapted from IANA standards and includes a predefined set of rules which define more than 6,200 applications for basic communication protocols. You can classify flows by a combination of parameters, including source and destination port, source and destination address, IP protocol, and exporter. Classifications help you determine how flows are associated with a particular appliance, service, or other component, and how they affect your network. For example, Bitcoin traffic on port A333, or all flows to port 80 marked as HTTP. Meridian allows for customized rules to classify flows, a rule includes a name for the classification or application and additional parameters such as source and destination ports and addresses that must match. Let's take a look at how simple it is to configure different types of devices to export flow data to OpenNMS Meridian. We'll look at configuring flow exports for Cisco, Juniper, PFSense, and VMware distributed vSwitches. Let's take a look at configuring a Juniper switch for SFlow export. We'll start by logging into the switch and then going to our configuration mode. We'll then set the protocols for SFlow collector and the IP address of our OpenNMS Meridian host, along with the UDP port for flow collection, which is port 9999. Once we've done that, we'll then set the protocols specific for SFlow to be a sample rate of every 1,000 packets. So we'll collect all egress and ingress traffic, one out of every 1,000 packets. We'll then set the protocols for SFlow to be exporting from specific interfaces. We then need to save the configuration and then we can take a look at that configuration just to verify it. Once we've committed our changes, we can also verify that we're sending the information for the specific interfaces that we wanted to send it for. Let's take a look at configuring a Cisco device to export flow data to OpenNMS. We'll start by logging into the device and then going into configuration mode. From there, we need to create a new flow exporter, and for ours, we're going to name it OpenNMS. We can then set the destination for our exporter to be the IP address for OpenNMS Meridian in our case. We also need to set the protocol to be a particular version, so in this case, NetFlow v9, and we need to set the port to be port 9999, which is the default for OpenNMS. From there, we're also going to want to configure some additional settings for our exporter. In this case, we're going to create a new monitor called OpenNMS Mon and make sure that we're setting the IPv4 information for all of the NetFlow data that we're recording off of that.
we're also going to want to configure our exporter to be open NMS and then set some cache timeouts for both active and inactive values. Lastly, we're going to want to set the specific interface that we want to monitor flow data from by configuring it as providing an exporter to the OpenNMS mon that we created a minute ago for both input and output data. And that's it. That's how you configure a Cisco device for exporting flow data to OpenNMS. Let's enable our PFSense system to export flow data to OpenNMS Meridian. First, we'll log in to our PFSense system. From there, we'll browse to the package manager, which is under system, and verify that we have the softflow-d package installed. In this case, it's already installed. If it wasn't, we would browse to the available packages tab and search for the softflow-d package. Once it is installed, we can then configure our PFSense server to export flows by clicking on the services menu and then softflow-d. We want to make sure it is set to enabled and that we have all of the interfaces that we want exporting selected. From there, we need to set the host IP address as the IP address for OpenNMS Meridian and the port to be port 9999. We can configure the sample rate in addition to setting the version of NetFlow that we want to export, in this case NetFlow 10 or IPFix. We can also adjust the flow tracking level, but by default it's set for MAC address, and the flow thresholding or the flow timestamp precision. We'll click Save. And that's it, setting up PFSense for exporting flow data to OpenNMS. Let's configure a VMware vSphere distributed vSwitch for exporting flow data to OpenNMS Meridian. First, we'll go to our vSphere console and log in as a user that has permissions to adjust networking settings. Next, we'll browse to the specific distributed vSwitch in the console and then right click on it. We need to edit the settings and set the collector IP address as the IP address for OpenNMS Meridian and set the port to 9999. In addition, we could set a switch IP address which would enable the switch to show up as a single device to OpenNMS instead of each host within a vSphere cluster. Setting the sampling rate to zero means that all traffic will be sent to the collector and not just a sample of it. We could adjust that sampling rate. By default, the process internal flows only will be disabled, which is what we want in this case. Next, we're going to set the exporter to run on a specific distributed port group. We'll need to right-click the port group, go to monitoring, and then make sure that NetFlow is enabled. We'll click OK to save, and that's it. That's how you configure a VMware distributed vSwitch for flow export to Meridian. For this demo, we'll take a look at how custom dashboards can be quickly designed using the OpenNMS plugin for Grafana and data from OpenNMS Meridian. We're going to demonstrate how simple it is to visualize flow data and see how much data is being transferred based on conversations between sources and destinations. Let's start by adding a visualization to our dashboard. Next, we'll change the type from time series to Sankey panel, which is a custom panel for Grafana. We're going to change the title while we're here too to be Sankey Flows. Then, we're going to change the data source to be OpenNMS Flow. We're going to select the metric as conversations and then we're going to select a combination of the top 10 conversations. Then we're going to further filter that based on the specific exporter node, 
which is 10 in our case. Along with that, we're going to look at IF index 1, and we're going to transform that to a table summary. In addition to looking at the data with those specific filters and operations, we're also going to transform this data by adding a field from a calculation. We're going to get a sum total of the bytes in and bytes out fields into a total number of bytes transferred. We can call this total bytes. We're also going to organize the fields to only look at the source, the application, and the destination fields. So we'll remove the location, the protocol, the bytes in, and the bytes out and ECN fields. We want to leave the total bytes field that we created, as removing it will remove the data, data needed to generate the flow thickness in the diagram. If we scroll down over on the right, we can select the total bytes as the value for the field that we will set the thickness of the lines with. In addition, we're also going to want to set the units to be bytes. Now we can click the Save button and save this as our Sangi Flow dashboard. Once it is saved and resized appropriately, we will see our flow data grouped based on the source of the application and the destinations. This is a very powerful way to look at flow data from OpenNMS Meridian. OpenNMS Meridian provides powerful flow thresholding capabilities. In this demo, we're gonna take a look at using them. We've logged into Meridian, and now we're going to go to the administrative menu. From there, we'll go to Configuring Thresholds. We've already configured a flow thresholding group, so we're going to edit that. We're going to adjust the values for the bytes in and rearm such that they're a lot smaller and will trigger for this lab. In this case, 1024 bytes and 512 bytes for the rearm. From there, we'll navigate back to the main page of Meridian and wait for the alert to trigger. Now we can see that the alarms that have been triggered by the flow threshold that we had just set. We can see that a high threshold has been exceeded for the bytes in metric that we had configured, and it appears across a few applications because of how we had it configured. This is just one example of how you can leverage flow data in OpenNMS Meridian to monitor your network for performance and anomalies. OpenNMS can scale to your needs and network size, with some of our customers ingesting and enriching over 350,000 flows per second. There are additional components to OpenNMS that can aid in large-scale flow collection and processing. If you've got a complex or demanding use case for flows, then get in touch. We're here to help. OpenNMS overcomes the challenge of collecting large amounts of flow data by distributing collection across minions. Minions are a lightweight, stateless service that are used to add capacitance and reduce the load on Meridian Core by enabling horizontal scaling of collection. Minions can be deployed as virtual machines, containers, hardware appliances, or physical servers. Meridian overcomes the challenges of enriching large amounts of flow data by distributing processing workload through Sentinels. 
Sentinels are purpose-built modules that allow Meridian to scale flow enrichment horizontally by transparently offloading work and placing enriched flow records directly into Elasticsearch. Sentinels can be installed on containers, virtual machines, or physical hardware and have requirements similar to Meridian. In summary, Meridian can ingest many types of flow and telemetry data, with the analytics Meridian provides for sources, destinations, types of traffic, and the quality of service, it's possible to gain holistic insight into your network. Using the powerful flow enrichment capabilities of Meridian, you can quickly pinpoint the sources of networking issues and reduce time to resolution. OpenNMS Meridian can be deployed on a single host and can scale with your needs by using minions and sentinels to enable collecting and enriching large amounts of data. So let's talk about SNMP, or the Simple Network Management Protocol, and how OpenNMS Meridian can leverage it for network monitoring. SNMP works as a client-server model where clients, or agents, provide information back to a central management server, Meridian in our case. The management server can query specific information and events from the agents. By default, Meridian collects information from SNMP devices over port 161 and uses a read community string of public. As a best practice though, community strings should be changed to something unique on your network devices. Meridian provides support for SNMP versions 1, 2C, and 3. The demos we go through today will be using version 2C. SNMP is a protocol used for collecting, managing, and organizing information for network devices. It's a common standard for network monitoring. Monitoring SNMP can help network administrators identify overloaded network connections and get alerts on hardware status, temperature, and potential failures. Imagine you're a network administrator for a regional internet service provider and you've got a group of customers that are complaining about intermittent service. It's possible to use SNMP data in Meridian to find out which connections are problematic. SNMP can also be used with servers to get information on resource usage, like disk space and memory. It is also used in data centers to get information from power supplies and AC units, as well as a lot of other systems. SNMP has five major components. Managers, agents, MIBs, or management information base, commands, and traps. It might be useful to think about SNMP by imagining you're the coach or manager of a sports team. The SNMP manager, that's you, you're responsible for managing and monitoring the team's performance and making changes when necessary. SNMP agents, those are the individual players on your team. Each player or agent provides specific information about their performance to you, the manager, when requested. MIB, or the management information base, you can think of this as like a playbook or a record that helps maintain information about the players. It contains information like positions, stats, and potential actions the players might take in the game. SNMP commands are like the instructions or requests you give to the players during the game. For instance, if you want to know how many goals a specific player has scored, you ask for that information. And SNMP traps, they're like unsolicited updates from players during the game. For example, if a player gets injured, they'd notify you immediately so that you can make substitutions or adjust your strategy accordingly. For SNMP v3, the terms for manager and agent change to command generator and command responder. For this demo, we're going to look at SNMP performance graphs from one of the nodes in OpenNMS Meridian. To start with, we're going to log in to OpenNMS Meridian and then go to the info menu and select nodes. This will take us to our list of nodes. From there, we're going to select this NTP server. Then we're going to click on resource graphs and graph all. The system has been configured to expose SNMP data to OpenNMS Meridian. From here, we can get basic SNMP node performance data along with additional information about processes, memory, number of users, interrupts, system uptime, and storage space. We can also look at OpenNMS Meridian's ability to collect SNMP interface data, and if there were any errors or discards, we would see those in these graphs. We can also see the number of multicast and unicast packets sent, along with other information from the network interface. It's easy to see how SNMP performance data can help provide a holistic view of your network using OpenNMS Meridian. 
So how does Meridian collect data through SNMP? By default, OpenNMS Meridian will discover and begin collection of SNMP from managed nodes using the default community string public and port 161. Data is collected every five minutes and stored in RRD files. The collection interval can be changed to enable faster or slower collection. The data can be stored in a time series database, which we'll explore later. The collect D or collection daemon within OpenNMS is responsible for collecting SNMP information. Though we often refer to SNMP polling, collect D collects information and stores it within the RRDs. Polar D or the polar daemon is used for service assurance and just verifies that SNMP service is running on monitored devices. We can collect things like bits in and out, discards or errors, the link quality, which is particularly useful for fiber optic links, system temperature, memory usage, storage space, and more depending on what the device provides. Let's take a look at the OpenNMS Meridian MIB compiler. We'll start by logging into the OpenNMS Meridian console and then going to the administrative menu. From there, we will open the SNMP MIB compiler. Once we're inside the MIB compiler, we're gonna upload a MIB for a device. In this case, a micro tick switch. You'll notice that the MIB is now in a pending state along the left-hand pane. We can right-click the MIB to compile it. You'll notice that the MIB compiles as evidenced by the log in the right pane. Now that we've compiled the MIB, we can also use that MIB to generate events, which are a way of correlating SNMP traps coming to OpenNMS from the device. We can also right-click the MIB to generate data collection values for any performance data coming to OpenNMS from the device. These options can both be highly customized depending on the device and data that's important to you. In addition to collecting data from SNMP devices, Meridian can also collect SNMP traps. Traps are events sent from devices with SNMP to a collector or a server, and Meridian can process them as events. The event definitions that Meridian uses come from the MIBs provided to it, just as we just saw. Events are structured historical records of things that happen in Meridian, along with the nodes, interfaces, and services that it monitors. Events are central to the operation of Meridian, and it's safe to assume that whenever something in Meridian appears to be working by magic, it's probably events working in the background. Events can be used to send notifications, trigger automation, and can be translated into other events. For this demo, we'll be exploring SNMP traps with OpenNMS Meridian. We're going to use a trap triggered from a service restart on a device to send an alert to OpenNMS Meridian. To do that, I'll open an SSH session to the device. We'll then issue a command to restart the SNMP service. This will then trigger an SNMP trap to be sent to OpenNMS Meridian. We can then go back to the Meridian console and look at the events by clicking on the status menu and then events. We will then click on all events and we can see in the event browser that we received a trap from the device notifying that the service had been shut down. We can also now see that the notice has been assigned to us and we received an alert for the device. We can quickly acknowledge the alert and then browse back to the home page. For this demo, we'll be using the OpenNMS plugin for Grafana to show how easy it is to create custom graphs using SNMP performance data from OpenNMS Meridian. Start by logging into Grafana and then creating a new dashboard. We'll need to add a new visualization to our new dashboard. We're going to leverage the time series panel for this new visualization. We'll change our data source from OpenNMS entities to OpenNMS performance. We're going to choose the type as attribute and select our node as a micro tick switch. 
We're going to select the resource as the bridge one interface. And then the attribute as IF high capacity in octets or out octets. In this case, out octets. We're going to duplicate this query so we can also get the in octets. Well, we're going to adjust the names for both of these to be bits per second in and bits per second out. In addition, we'll need to set a title for the graph as bits in and out. and scroll down until we can select the units, and we'll set those at data rate of bits per second. We'll then click Save, and save the dashboard as micro tick bits per second. We've now created a graph showing the bits in and out per second for our micro tick switch on the Bridge 1 interface. Performance data in Meridian can be stored using time series databases. By default, Meridian uses RRD files to store collected data. For small to medium sized customers and users just looking to kick the tires, RRDs are a great option. They are extremely performant, take up little disk space, and work out of the box. Meridian can also use OpenNMS Time Series DB, which is a hosted service offering from OpenNMS for storing time series data so that users don't have to set up their own time series databases. If users want to set up their own time series database, then we provide a component for Apache Cassandra called Newts that can be leveraged. This comes with the need to install an Apache Cassandra cluster and maintain it. We also provide community support for Cortex and compatible derivatives. Meridian overcomes the challenges of collecting large amounts of SNMP data by distributing collection across minions. Minions are lightweight, stateless service that are used to add capacitance and reduce the load on Meridian Core by enabling horizontal scaling of collection. Minions can be deployed as virtual machines, containers, hardware appliances, or even physical servers. Minions can also enable collection from overlapping subnets. Today, we've seen the insight and intelligence that can be gained by using OpenNMS Meridian to monitor network flows and SNMP. OpenNMS Meridian goes beyond just flows and SNMP, though. It's capable of ingesting telemetry, syslog data, WMI, JDBC, JMX, and a whole lot more. OpenNMS Meridian is the ideal platform to give you holistic insight into your network. If you just want to give it a try for yourself, though, look at OpenNMS Horizon, our open source community supported edition where we are constantly adding product enhancements before they reach stability in our enterprise grade product Meridian. If you want to learn more or have any questions, visit our website at openNMS.com. Mm -hmm.